The clearest way into the universe is through a forest wilderness. Away from city lights into the forest, sights I go. She is Ratna Singh, a naturalist, trainer, and a wildlife hospitality professional. Ratna has been awarded the Karamveer Chakra last year for her work with the rural youth, especially, especially the women. She works closely with the MP Tourism and Kana Tiger Reserve. To start with Ratna, please share with us on your childhood and how it invariably shaped your career ahead. We never thought when you were in school that you would be into the forest all your life. Had I known that, you know, it would have been <laughs> thing. So over to you. So thank you, Rashi. Well, actually, <clears throat> if you remember, you know, we were in school together. And uh, if you remember, I used to be an outdoorsy sort of a person, you know, always out playing. I was on a couple of teams. So for me, outdoors was always something that was much more exciting. Uh, to be uh, rather than sitting in a stuffy or in a in a classroom or indoors, so definitely it stemmed from a love of the outdoors. And secondly, my childhood home, you know, you know, I was in the boarding, so when I would go home. Uh, there was a there were a couple of tiger reserves that were driving distance since from home. So whenever I would go back home, that's the one place that we would go to for holidays. So I suppose you know that love has stayed with me, and I'm really fortunate that there is a profession um, which accommodates both my love for the wilderness and a love of the outdoors. I remember each and everything, Ratna, since uh, we were in school together, and. Uh... What have so many years in the wilderness brought to you as a person? What is it? One special thing, because it's, I think it's been years now you've been in the forest. Since 2005 now, almost 2005, 2006, constantly. But even before that, you know, my home was near, uh, it's, it's rural, it's a jungle area. First of all, it, it, it's taught me gratitude for, 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 for the opportunities that I have and for the life that I've had so far. And secondly, not to take anything for granted. Because even in the wilderness, it's everything's very dynamic. You can't take anything for granted. And the one thing that you learn from the animals, especially, you know, the ungulates, the prey base, I mean, like deer and, uh, you know, antelopes, is they live literally from day to day. One day that they're alive is another day in their lives because you, you're never certain. Tribal culture and traditions is largely based in forest jungles. Yes. How yes. have you been influenced and inspired by any of them? Oh, with yes. the communities that were living inside the jungle or tribal communities, as, as you call them, um, their lifestyle has been, I think, the most sustainable in, in, in the current scenario when people are talking about sustainability and it's such a buzzword. We, if you look at their lifestyle and if you see their villages, you know, it's completely organic. There is nothing that is wasted. They live, they live in very picturesque. And I'm not trying to glorify poverty here. Of course, they have the hardships as well. But just in the life of the way they've been. And because I suppose living, having lived so close to nature, having, uh, you know, in terms of their health, they don't suffer a whole lot of health issues that we do in the cities. Mm, they're just healthier people. And, and One of the big things, uh, which is something that is not very serious or philosophical, but one of the big things that when you look at these communities is that they really do enjoy life, you know, and they literally live from day to day. So if there's a celebration, they're all going to get together and have a very, very merry time with not really too much thought for tomorrow. So I suppose in a, once in a while, we've got to all learn to let loose and just enjoy the time and be in the now. One very striking thing, Rashi, that I have, uh, um, you know, I really appreciate about communities uh, that, are, you know, that have been isolated and that are not sort of mainstream is the equality between men and women. It's not, they are not patriarchal. In fact, some of them are, 
uh, I won't say matriarchal, but there's a lot of equality. So a woman, it's changing now, you know, with the coming of television and the general culture uh, seeping in where some patriarchy is coming in there as well. But by and large, it's a, these are very equal uh, societies. I totally believe you because coming something from someone who is right there and so genuine. I think this is beautiful, Ratna. How can people contribute towards wildlife conservation? A lot of people want to be involved and a lot of people are very, very conscious about trying to conserve the planet and talking about conservation. But it's not possible for everyone to give up everything and come and live in the jungle and then do something, you know. So what I would um, request people to do are whatever they can do in their own sphere, even if it is taking a conscious decision to give up plastic. And I'm not saying that you have to be very militant about it, but one plastic bag used less is one good step for the environment. So anything you do, any little thing that you do uh, will add to conservation. And even if, it, if, you, if you don't have a garden, you have a balcony, you can put some potted plants. If you don't even have a balcony, certainly you can put a little, uh, you know, plant in a bottle, a money plant in a bottle. Just grow greens, I would say. Use less plastic, that it all contributes to conservation. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to come and live in the jungles and um, eat less meat. Um, if you're living in the cities, if you keep a bowl of water, an earthen bowl of water, uh, in your balcony or on your terrace for stray animals and birds to come and drink, that is your contribution to conservation. Because wildlife is not only in the jungles, you know, there is also urban wildlife. There are squirrels and little birds and little creatures that somehow are managing to survive in the cityscape as well. I think more than a naturalist, you are a beautiful person. My best wishes to you all the time. So let's talk you, Ratna Singh, as a naturalist, somebody who can help you look up, you know, go through the jungles. Let's uh, Rashi, I started out as a naturalist. Now a naturalist is, you can say, a wildlife safari guide. So about 15, 17 years ago, there weren't, uh, you know, there were no courses to be a professional guide in India. But... Uh, 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 there was this institution set up, Taj Safaris, where I trained and it was in partnership with an African uh, safari company. So I trained to be a professional wildlife guide or a professional wildlife uh, safari naturalist there. And I worked for many years and then I trained to be a trainer. You know, so I trained to be a trainer and I also... Um, some of the things, some of the other things that I picked up in working with, uh, you know, companies like these is green operations. Like, what are your hotel or hospitality operations that you can do so that they do not harm the environment? So now um, I'm an independent professional. I work uh, with a number of forest departments. I primarily train wildlife guides for the forest departments in the park, as well as um, private safari companies. So what a naturalist does basically is, uh, in simple terms, uh, he or she is a safari guide. But rather than have basic knowledge of tracking, they, they're a little bit more in depth. So I would say that's what um, constitutes a naturalist. As for me, I now primarily train other guides and naturalists. And I've, I've been doing that in uh, a lot in central India, I'd say, also in Nepal, as well as on the thailand Myanmar border. I've worked with the safari company, training guides there as well. So... Uh Coming to you as a trainer, what do you yes. think the quality is needed by somebody who wants to get into this profession? Because people generally are animal lovers. Yes. For them, animal is a dog lover. You know? That's true. So, so huh. we are talking beyond that. Huh. So uh, actually, Rashi, it's, it's very surprising when I say this to people. Definitely anybody who wants to be a wildlife naturalist or who wants to be a safari guide the primary primary skill or quality 
not skill, sorry, a quality, inherent quality that is required is to be passionate about wilderness. I'm not saying that you have to be a great conservationist. You just have to love the outdoors. And that's number one. Number two, you have to be comfortable in your own company because uh, these areas in your job, you can lead uh, an isolated life, you know, in terms of you will, of course, be with your colleagues and uh, other people who are working in that uh, hospitality or wildlife company, but you'll be away from your own friends and family. So you sort of have to also be comfortable in your own company. And third, it's not, I'm, I'm saying third, but it's actually very important, is a lot of uh, people feel that they are fed up with city life and they don't really want the rigmarole of a corporate job. And so they don't, you know, they want to be alone in the solitude of the jungle. Well, a naturalist job, a safari guide's job is to guide other people. So if there are people who think that I will be a naturalist and I will live alone in the jungle, that's not going to happen. You have to actually like uh, other people as well and be quite personable so that has to be a, that that is going to be an integral part of your job so I would say these three things to have a passion for the wilderness to be comfortable in your own company and thirdly to to be able to guide other people and to be to be able to you know gel with all sorts of personalities so those are the primary things as far as um, education is concerned, anybody can be a naturalist. Yeah, so you mean to say this is not an escape? It's yeah. not an escape. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a... <laughs> In fact, Rashi, it's, it's not an escape. You're actually having to deal with people who have come for an escape. They're looking to you. They're going to depend on you to interpret the wonders of nature for them. So it's definitely not an escape. Being a naturalist is not an escape. You're actually going to have, uh, you know, as uh, visitors come to the park, they may stay in your wildlife camp or any hotel that you're working and then you're going to be guiding them into the park. Uh, you will have a fresh set of guests every two or three days. So it can be quite busy and you can be surrounded with people, but they're not, it's just two or three days that you, you have them for company, but uh, you will be surrounded with people. Uh, Ratna, do you get these... Uh... Thoughts of staying in the city ever? Say that the city has its plus points. I do enjoy certain attractions of the city, but uh, forever I see myself. When I think forever for the rest of my life, I see myself in the jungle. But I, I do like to go into the city every now and then. Uh, you, as a naturalist, you as being with the animals, or maybe uh, any of your uh, you know narrow escapes with the animals. Let's hear any of the case studies here. Once it happened in Africa that I was in a camp and uh, I was in a tent in this camp. And the tent, um, the security was a, a, a slim, you can say, electric fencing around the tent. Okay. And I was alone in that tent, uh, the, the furthest tent near this uh, sort of uh, electric fence and just on the other side there was a whole pride of lions there was a small pond and there was a pride of lions around some seven or eight lions and they were there the whole night so you can say I spent a night in a train in a tent separated by a thin electric wire like some 20 you can say some 10 to 20 meters away all night long you see, the older you get, having lived in these environments, then you realize that they're just animals doing their thing and they don't really mean any harm to That's you. That's a beautiful point, you know. Uh, you've just put across that actually they don't bother. You are the one. Okay, so what I do, Rashi, is that I'm an independent trainer and uh, people who are in this space of wildlife training, they just reach out to me on their own. There's just me. I want, I love training um, so I train every year Rashi I run one training program which is only for the rural youth just a, it's just something that makes me feel really good 
to train these people if it's if nothing else just a little bit about uh, you know hospitality and wildlife tourism i do some grooming i do some communication skills and it enables them to find jobs with various lodges and resorts and camps or even with the forest department imagination and reality are two different platforms altogether ratna and uh, you know uh, people imagine themselves to be wild in the jungles just for four days but <laughs> living true. in the jungle you know is a different yeah. it's you yeah. have to love it you have to love the yes. concept just a message that i want to give to people about people who are very conscious about the environment if you can i i, I just want to speak free hand like that unstructured is like a lot of people they are very careful when they come to the jungle they are highly conscious ki i'm not going to litter i'm going to carry my trash bag i will not create a noise but the same people in the city in the environment that they live 24/7 year after year they don't extend the same respect to their own environment the people think nothing of honking people think nothing of blaring loud music uh, when they're hosting a party they think nothing of littering they think nothing of uh, you know keeping a whole lot of lights on so it's always uh, amazes me i don't use the word amazing too often but it always amazes me that the same people when they come to a jungle and they are oriented by a naturalist ki you know you're not allowed to make loud sounds and please don't throw litter and they are very careful but they these are educated people that live in the city they are aware but still when they when they'll be four days in the jungle as you said they will be very respectful of the environment and when they go back to their own environment in which they are living 24/7 they don't show it any respect so that's you know it's my request to people to take a step back and perhaps think about that um, all good things are wild and free in case you want to uh, get yourself trained as an earth naturalist you want to go ahead into the forest and you want to enjoy the you know the the real forest with ratna i think she will welcome you more than anything else in this whole world you want to get in touch with her you can always call us you can look for her on the facebook on the internet she is all over just ping in to her mm-hmm. in case somebody wants to speak to her regarding the training any of the corporates specific training program for themselves they can get in touch with us and they can also write to ratna you know i'm not really available online all the time i don't have a website mm-hmm. but if they google me they will find me cool ratna singh 9 is my um, instagram handle mm-hmm.